Hello everyone, in today's video we'll discuss how to develop a Linux based environment using Windows subsystem for Linux. So for those who are not familiar with WSL, this is a tool that will allow you to install the complete Linux based environment on your Windows machine within minutes. So in this video we'll cover the process of how to get started with the WSL from Windows 11 machine and learn some of the important commands to install multiple Linux operating system. So once we have the WSL up and running, we'll explore how to set it up on the Visual Studio code and additionally we'll enhance the terminal view by loading the Z shell which provides a visually appealing command line experience. So by end of this tutorial, we'll have a complete understanding of WSL and ready to utilize its full functionality for building a development environment for your automation and coding task. So before we proceed, if you are new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoy this type of content. So there are a couple of ways we can install WSL. So first approach would be more of a manual where you activate the individual features like Windows subsystem for Linux and virtual machine features along with the Linux kernel update package. So once all the features are activated, we can go to the Microsoft store and install the Linux distribution of your choice. This is very manual and bit old method. So another approach we are going to discuss on this video is installing WSL using the WSL install command. It's important to note that it activates all the required features in the background for WSL and install the Ubuntu distribution of Linux, which is a default image. So let's go ahead and run this command on our shell. We can use either PowerShell or the default Windows command prompt for this. So on the terminal, you can see that it first installed the virtual machine platform. Then it tried to install the second feature called WSL. Then finally download and install the Ubuntu package. So our installation has been completed here and it is asking to reboot the system to affect the changes. So after reboot of our Windows machine, it would launch the WSL by itself. So here it is trying to launch the Ubuntu machine. It generally takes few minutes. So once you have the WSL installed, we need to set the credentials. So for now, the installation is fully completed and we can see the version it is loaded currently. Next, we are going to see some of the important WSL commands. And if you are inside the PowerShell window and simply you want to launch the Linux shell, then you just need to type WSL, then it will take us to the Ubuntu shell. Now, let's say if you have multiple distribution loaded, then use hyphen D flag followed by the WSL to go to specific image. Now, if you want to look at the default distribution, use WSL status command, which will show you the default distribution and the WSL version currently running. And we can use a verbose command to see the current status of each images. Another important command is the WSL list online, which will show you all the valid distribution you can install. So here you can find pretty much all the common distribution we can install with WSL command. So with that, let's see how to install another Linux distribution and its command set. So earlier we have used WSL install command, which will install the default distribution on WSL. And if you add hyphen D flag, along with the distribution, it will allow you to install that particular image. So in this example, we'll have a Debian image loaded. So please remember when we load the second distribution, we don't need to activate the features like WSL or the virtual machine platform. It straight away go to the package installation of Debian image. Then we need to set the credential to complete the installations. So now we have both the images loaded. Let's run the list command to see the details. We can see both the images and those are currently offline. Now let's see how to run these images. So in Debian, we need to mention the distribution details with hyphen D flag. So I'll have one more terminal open to run the list command. Now we can see that Debian is currently running. And for starting Ubuntu, we just need to use WSL, which will start the default distribution image. Now if you run the list command again, we can see both images are currently running. So finally, we look at how to send the commands from PowerShell without going inside each distribution. So the command for the Ubuntu would be WSL, then the command we want to run. Here we'll use apt update command. It is pulling all the required updates how we do on the regular Linux. Similarly, on Debian, we can run similar command from the PowerShell, but we'll need to provide hyphen D to select the distribution, then the command we want to run. So that's pretty much we have from the WSL command side. Next, we'll see how to set up VS Code to access these WSL images. So first, let's launch the VS Code and install the required extension for WSL. Well, there is a specific WSL extension available. I'll go ahead and install the remote development package from Microsoft, which include all the essential extensions. 
So once it is installed, click on the green icon located on the extreme left side. This will open all the commands for the remote development as you can see here. And you'll see the command for WSL, remote SSH, dev container and more. For WSL, we have the connect WSL command which will attempt to connect through the default distributions. After a few seconds, you'll see the WSL Ubuntu appear in the bottom left corner. This indicates that now it is connected to Ubuntu distribution we just loaded. If you click on remote, you'll find Ubuntu distribution listed in the remote tab. Now let's go to the terminal and run the lsp underscore release command and you will see that we are on Ubuntu release 2204. So now we have set up the Ubuntu and it is accessible from VS Code. Let's proceed to integrate a Debian so that we can easily switch between these two within VS Code. To connect to Debian, open VS Code and use the keyword shortcut Ctrl Shift P and it will open the command palette. From the command palette, select connect to WSL command. It will prompt you to choose which image you want to connect and activate. In this case, we'll select Debian. The VS Code now will start the Debian image and activate it. So once it is done, you will see both Ubuntu and Debian images in the Remote Explorer. And the current window is connected to Debian. Now if you want to access Ubuntu, you can open into a different window. Next, let's move to the final part of this video where we will see how to install and configure the Zshell prompt for the nice visual experience. To do that, we first need to download and install the Zshell for Linux using the apt command. Once it's done, we'll visit to all oh my Zshell page, which is a community driven open source project. I personally like this name. Click on the install all oh my Zshell then we can either use curl or the wcat to install the terminal. Copy the link and run it from the VS code. After the installation, you will notice that the prompt has been changed from the host name to the arrow tilt symbol. Zshell uses themes, so you'll select different themes based on your preference and modify the configuration. So let me show you where to change the theme. To do that, we need to open Zshell configuration file. I'll open it through VS code editor using code command, but you can use vi or the nano editor as well. So in the configuration file, you will notice that current Zshell theme which is Ruby RSL. At this moment, let's change it to the popular theme Amuse. Once we save the configuration file and open the terminal window, you will see that the theme has been changed. Now you will see the tilt symbol with the clock icon and the current time based on your system clock. Another great feature of Zshell is that it provides a current directory path. So let's say if you want to check the Python location. I'm just giving python 3 then it provides you the current path and if I go inside cd into that one I'm into the python path and whenever we enter the terminal it shows where I am currently you know it's, it's very convenient features and you don't need to put pwt or know the current path by running those commands from the linux so that's pretty much everything I want to cover in this tutorial I hope you find it informative Thanks for watching and see you next time.